Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be doing a trying new makeup video. I've um, purchased and received quite a few things over the past few weeks that I just haven't been able to try on camera for you guys. Some of these things I've like already tried uh, myself, so I can give you a little bit of feedback, but some of these other things I haven't even tried yet. So some of the things that we will be trying today, uh, the Shatakai Radiance Elixir. This is something that they sent to me uh, a few weeks ago and I have actually uh, tried it. So I'll give you uh, my thoughts on that. Um, the Gucci Press Powder, which I have been using uh, here and there a little bit. I do have some thoughts on that. And I did purchase the Westman Atelier iPods in the Le Jour. They had sent me the other set, the Le Nuit set and I really, really love them. So I wanted to try this one. I also did purchase another Westman Atelier um, Baby Cheeks blush stick in Minette. This is like a corally color that I don't have. I have, I think all of the other ones. So I thought I would put that on for you as well. And I also got this gorgeous PR set from NARS. So we'll definitely be playing around with these, maybe doing a little bit of swatching. I have the Estee Lauder bubble highlights here. And then I did also wanna try the Danessa Myricks Vision Cover Cream. This is uh, like the foundation that's part of her line. I have it in the shade N03. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be doing a Danessa Myricks like dedicated video because I got a lot of stuff from Beautylish and I'm still kind of playing around with it because a lot of it is like, mixing together and like the textures are very, very unique and different and they're definitely geared towards makeup artists, which I am not. So I'm still kind of like poking around with those things, but I thought I would go ahead and just try the Vision Cream Cover because I have not tried this yet. Um, but let's go ahead and start with this Chantecaille Radiance Elixir. So this is a serum, uh, but it has like a little bit of like iridescence to it. So it's really meant to brighten your complexion and you know feed your skin because it is a skincare product. So one thing I have definitely learned, um, I have used this maybe twice before, is you definitely have to shake it. If you don't shake it, um, you don't really get the iridescence. Like I think the serum in here kind of separates. So definitely shake it. It is quite liquidy and it comes in this dropper type bottle. So the box says this is an illuminating serum infused with glow boosting botanicals. There's two innovative peptides that hydrate and provide an immediate glow while colorless carotenoids and refining lipopeptide hydrate and reduce visible redness for skin that looks smooth, fresh, and radiant. So I think this is one of those products that really is skincare, um, but they added a little something something in there to kind of give it a glow. So I'm gonna use it as primer, and I drop about like a dime size amount, but you can see it's fairly thin and it's a little bit runny. So I'm just going to pat that on. I really, really like the way this feels on the skin. It's a little bit cooling, which is really nice. It has, as you could tell, that kind of like thinner texture, so it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. I think this is great for the summertime. I have really, really dry skin, and so, you know, I tend to have a lot of products that are very thick, very creamy, which is great for my skin, but when I'm about to put makeup on, I do prefer something a little bit lighter, something that's gonna be absorbed, something that's not going to kind of like interfere with my makeup, and this is really, really great for that. I think also if you have a oilier skin type, you're gonna like this too, because it really is very, very weightless. And in terms of a makeup primer, it's just a little bit sticky, so I think it helps maybe like a little bit with the longevity of foundation because it does have like a little bit of tackiness to it. The one thing I have noticed though is that once I get it on the skin, I don't necessarily see that iridescence. I mean, I think my skin looks like I just put on some skincare, but I don't think it actually looks like exceptionally radiant or I don't think the iridescence in here really kind of shows too much. So I know this is a product that you can also mix in with foundation and you could probably put this on you know, over your foundation, but I've been using it, you know, as a primer like this and I don't really see that iridescence, but I do think my skin looks, you know, really nice. And I do like that it's just like the slightest bit uh, tacky. Oh, one thing I should also mention before I put this away is that there is a rose scent. The very first ingredient in here is um, like a rose flower water. So it definitely has like a rose scent. It has that Chantecaille rose scent. It is very, very faint. I feel like now that I have it on my skin for a little while, I don't really smell it, but when I take it out of the bottle or when I open up the bottle, I definitely smell that like rose scent. Uh, but let's go ahead and move over to the Danessa Myricks Vision Cream Cover. So this is a brand new uh, foundation to me. Um, I'm not sure if this shade will work. I guess we'll see. But here is what the packaging looks like. 
And if I were to go by what's in that little window, I do think this foundation should work for me. All right, so I'm just gonna shake it up. It does have a pump dispenser. And the texture of this is kind of like lotion-y. So it's not running down my hand. So it has like a very nice kind of creamy consistency. I don't think it has a scent at all. I was smelling it off of my finger, but I think I'm smelling the Chantecaille. Yeah, I don't think this has a scent at all, which is very nice. I am going to use my trusty BK Beauty uh, 101 foundation brush. And blend that in. So the description of this does say that this has fairly high coverage, which I can see immediately. But let's spread this out and see what we've got here. This is a neutral color, but I feel like it looks a little yellow on my skin. Yeah, this is a very full coverage foundation. Wow, this is probably one of the fullest coverage foundations I have ever tried. Definitely something I am not used to. It looks a little cakey on my nose. Let me just blend that out a little bit more. I like that there's like a little bit of like a natural sheen going on, which is really nice. A lot of times, you know, full coverage foundations tend to be kind of matte um, or they just have kind of like a skin like finish. And, and this one has like a little bit more glow to it than usual. You could probably see other, oh, could probably see it right there. So that is very interesting. Yeah, I think this shade is a little bit off for me. I feel like it's a little bit too like yellow based for my skin tone, but maybe we can fix that up with some concealer and some powder and stuff. But wow, that is full coverage. If you're looking for full coverage, you may want to check this out. I like that it doesn't look very cakey though at all. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay. Let's move on. So that's the Danessa Myricks Vision Cream Cover. And this was the shade N03. So maybe I would get something that's like a little bit more cooler toned next time. So as for concealer, I was gonna use the La Prairie Skin Caviar Perfect Concealer, the one that I reviewed in yesterday's video, because this foundation is so full coverage and this concealer has more of like a medium kind of coverage that I'm not even sure if you'll be able to see it. But I think we should try it. I think it does help at least with the tone of the foundation because again, I think the foundation is a little bit yellow and I think that actually kind of neutralized it a bit. Let me put some more on this side. All right, I feel like as I'm sitting here, I think the foundation could be oxidizing a little bit. Do you guys see that at all? I feel like it looks just a little bit deeper I was gonna say like kind of in my forehead down my T-zone, but kind of all over. I'm kind of seeing it on my cheeks too. What are the ingredients? Okay, the very first uh, ingredient in the Vision Cream Cover foundation is titanium dioxide. And I think that's what causes uh, foundations to oxidize a bit. It's just getting a little bit more orangey there. Interesting. Okay, so we put on the La Prairie concealer and I do think that helped with like the tone of you know what was going on around my eyes uh, but let's go ahead and move on to powder so i have the gucci pressed powder it is the beauty powder i think is the full name so i have this in shade four um, i just started to get really impatient because a lot of the lighter colors have been sold out and four was the lightest that i could kind of like catch online and i ordered this off of selfridges so anyway i think they've restocked because this was a while ago but this is the 04 shade and I've got my Surat Beauty face brush. I'm just gonna dip it in and pounce. So this is not the first time that I am using this powder. So I do have some thoughts. I think this powder um, looks very, very nice on the skin. I think it mattifies. I think um, it does a little bit of blurring like underneath my eyes. Um, the only thing I don't like about this powder is I wish it was just a little bit more translucent. I do feel like you see quite a bit of like this pigmentation in the powder and for setting powders I really you know kind of prefer just a really kind of like light translucent kind of powder. I just want to set my makeup. I don't necessarily want to change like the tone of my base or anything. So that's my only like very minor complaint about this powder because it's not like a 
powder foundation or anything like that. It's just a little bit more than what I would say is a translucent powder. But it wears really nicely. It does do like a nice blurring effect. I don't feel like this powder um, like gets cakey or anything like that as I'm wearing it. It has actually worn really well. So I have been enjoying it. And oh, the other con is that it does have a fragrance and it does linger for a little bit. It does dissipate, but it does linger for a little bit. It is fairly strong, so not a big fan of that. But the way this powder makes my skin look, it's actually pretty nice. Okay, and now for bronzer. So we have quite a few bronzers to choose from. Um, so NARS came out with this uh, new bronzer collection probably a, a month or so ago, and I have just been completely inundated with bronzers. I did a whole kind of like bronzer roundup video kind of talking about all the bronzers that I had uh, played with and, and that were new to me um, from maybe earlier this year and there was 10 of them. And I personally had not had great luck with the NARS Laguna bronzer, but they sent this to me and when I opened up the Laguna, which is this one, it looked different to me. The Laguna I feel like that I tried years ago was like a little bit of like an ashy, it had like a little bit more of like an ashy brown kind of coloring to it. This one looks a little bit more warm. It looks a little bit uh, more caramelly. So um, I had mentioned when I hauled this, I had mentioned that I thought this looked kind of different from the original Laguna that I had played with and I don't have any original Lagunas laying around. And someone commented that they thought that this was kind of a different shade. So anyway, I thought I would maybe play around with this Laguna or if that one was too deep, maybe use this um, San Juan shade. And then the two deeper shades in here, this one is Casino. This is another one that's been around uh, for a while. I don't know if they've like changed the color at all. And then this one is Punta Cana. So these are both definitely too deep for me. So let me um, actually swatch Casino. So there is Casino and there is Punta Cana. And I'm just playing around with the non-matte versions. I really like non-matte bronzers. And these really look like they have a nice sheen to them. You almost can't tell in the pan but once I got them swatched, yeah, I can definitely see like that satin sheen there. Really quite beautiful. And the texture seems really, really soft. So I'm gonna try San Juan first. This is the lightest one. And, oh, let me swatch this one too. I was just gonna put it on my face, but let's swatch that one. So there is San Juan, and then there is Laguna. Ooh, I really like the finish of these, wow. By looking at these pans, I really didn't think they were gonna have such a beautiful sheen to them. Ooh, I'm excited. All right, so let's start with San Juan, which is the lightest. I've got my Refer P22 brush here. Ooh, ooh, that is a nice, kind of natural, everyday kind of bronze for me. Ooh, beautiful. So there's San Juan, and then this side has nothing. This is really pretty. I like this like slightly peachy tinge to it, but I think it's fairly neutral. Hmm, really pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and try Laguna on this cheek. I am very curious to see if this one is too deep for me. Okay, so there's Laguna and there is San Juan. Like, do you see it? I feel like Laguna always turns really kind of like gray on my skin. It's so strange. And I do think this looks different from the other Lagunas that I've tried, but it just ends up looking really, really kind of like a brownish gray, not even like cool enough for it to be like a contour. It just ends up looking kind of muddy on my skin tone. The San Juan I think looks beautiful, but there's something about Laguna I think that just I don't know, it just does something weird on my skin tone, even with this full coverage foundation. I thought the full coverage foundation was gonna save me. Maybe it's just too deep for me. You know, maybe the shade is just too deep for my skin tone and San Juan is really the shade for me. But there you have it. People ask me all the time, like when I talk about bronzers, they're like, you never talk about the NARS bronzers. And I'm like, they don't look good on me. But the San Juan, I really like. This has a really nice tone for me. But the Laguna, not so great. Not so great, it looks muddy, I think. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. All right, uh, let me see. Well, I guess I'll just have two different bronzers on, no big deal, right? I'll just take my powder brush and kind of 
soften up the Laguna side a little bit here. And that this big old bronzer that was included is actually Laguna, <laughs> but it's got a gold overspray on there. So that's kind of a shame, but I'm just going to put this away. Maybe put this into a giveaway. I hate that it doesn't have a box, but hopefully you guys won't mind, but I think I'll put this into a giveaway. All right, moving on to blush. I'm really excited to try this uh, Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks Blush Stick in Minette. So this is like the one shade that I did not have, and this is the most corally. So there it is swatched. Oh, it's so pretty, it's so bright. Look at that, this is what it looks like in the packaging. I'm just gonna tap some on here. I don't know why I waited so long to get this color. I'm in love already. Okay, I've got my Westman Atelier blender brush and just gonna dab that over, but it kind of just blends itself. I think I need a little bit more. I know, I know. I can hear you guys through the camera. Michelle, stop it. <laughs> Just stop it right now with the blush. I think, uh-oh. I feel like this blush is picking up the uh, foundation, even though I have, ooh, dog hair. Even though I have some powder down, I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's kind of picking up the foundation a little bit there. I'm actually going to apply a little bit more powder there. And this time I'm just gonna use my finger. I think maybe the brush and this cream maybe was just like a little bit too much, but if I just kind of tap with my finger, it'll probably be okay. Yeah, that looks better. I don't know if you guys could see that before, but yeah, it just seemed like it was moving the foundation underneath, but adding that powder and just sort of tapping the blush on helped a lot. Isn't this blush so pretty? Oh my God, I love it. All right, so continuing on to highlight. So I purchased these two, I call them the bubble highlights, but they're the Pure Color Love Cooling Highlighter from Estee Lauder. This is in 001 Moon Pearl, which is the lighter shade. And then I also got 002 Sultry Shine. So we can try one on each cheek. Uh, let's start with the 001 Moon Pearl. And these are just like those Chantecaille bubble blushes that came out last summer. Uh, like the Guerlain Meteorites bubble wash that came out last summer as well. Same idea. They have a really nice cooling effect. I will say I have tried these a couple of times and they haven't really worked out that well for me, but I'm gonna give them another shot. So I had been like kind of dabbing it directly onto my cheeks or even kind of like swiping it, which did not work out well. So today I'm going to just go ahead and go in with my finger. And I don't know if you guys can see, but even going in with my finger, do you see how like kind of chunky it is and like not it's just not smooth it's very strange so anyway let's try that I'm just gonna tap it on right here yeah it's almost like it's too thick like it doesn't want to like spread evenly it just looks like it's kind of pasty it's very it's it's just very weird yeah it just looks like it doesn't look smooth it doesn't look smooth. And I think for highlight, you really, well, for makeup, you really want something that looks, you know, smooth on the skin. It almost looks like the cream version of flaky, whatever whatever that word that is. So disappointing because I love the Chantecaille blushes. I love the Guerlain blushes. Those just applied beautifully and they were just, they were cooling and I could put them on directly. I could put them on with my fingers. I could grab a brush, you know, pick up some product and like dab it on. It worked any which way. These are not so great. So this is 002 Sultry Shine. And, oh, maybe you can see better with this because this shade is a little bit deeper. Do you see how it's just kind of like chunky, patchy, uneven, kind of, kind of like it looks flaky even though it's not, it's not dry, but it looks like it's just kind of flaky. Let's put it on. Yeah, and it just doesn't blend well. Like you can see where it like ends. And if I try and blend it, it almost makes it worse. Like you kind of don't want to touch it, but they, it's not like it goes on seamlessly. So these are kind of a fail, unfortunately. No new eyebrow products. So I'm just gonna use my Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. I feel like I've been using this one tube forever and it just won't die, which I'll take. I'm so happy about that. 
All right, guys, now is the time for the Westman Atelier Le Jour, I think is how you pronounce it. <laughs> I need to take French lessons. So the other iPod set, the Le Nuit set, comes with a black pouch, and this comes with a light pink one. So that is really nice and an, and an easy way to kind of differentiate the iPods. And then here are the three colors. So let's start with Neige. Here's what Neige looks like. And someone asked me uh, when I talked about the other set um, in another video, what the imprint is. That is the Western Atelier, uh, I guess, logo. It looks like a hand-drawn heart with a WA on one side. Can you guys see that? That's the logo. So it's that heart with the WA. So that's what is imprinted on each of these. So there is Neige. Wow, look at that. It's just the most subtle, like sophisticated, silvery color. Wow, that's really pretty. And then we have Chocolat. Oh, you could probably see the imprint on this one better. There is Chocolat. And then here is Tabak. There's like a little peachiness in there, which I didn't really see in the pot here. I thought this was gonna be more of like a taupe, but it's actually like kind of a warm peachy color. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, well, I'm gonna start with this uh, tabak color and I'm gonna try and just use my fingers. I was using a brush when I played with the other set in that other video and it worked fine with a brush, but I feel like these are such, you know, they're like very, very soft and they're very, very subtle and what I like so much about Westman Atelier products is that they're just so easy to use. And I think if you're able to use your finger, it just, you know, just makes it that much easier. So, so I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna pick up some of the tabac and I'm just going to press it right onto my lid. I'm gonna put this all over. Wow, if she ever sells these individually, this color is the one to get. Wow, so pretty. I'm so glad I picked up this set. I really like the Le Nuit set, which is why I thought, oh, I don't need the other set. I love this one so much, but I'm really glad that I picked this one up too. Mm. So there's Tabac like all over my lids. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of the Neige. I just wanna add that to like the inner corners of my eyes here. So pretty, I love how subtle it is, but very, very effective, you know? You can see it, it's so pretty. It opens up the inner corners of my eyes, but understated, oh, I just love these. Okay, and then finally, let's try this Chocolat shade, and I'm just gonna use, and I'm just going to press this onto my outer corners here. Oh my God, I love it. I just love how simple and understated and elegant these shadows are. They're just so beautiful. Either set, whichever one calls to you, I highly recommend. They're so, so gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna curl my eyelashes and we're gonna use the Gucci mascara that I hauled a long time ago. I think I got this during the Sephora VIB sale. Um, so I've used it a couple of times and I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I really don't remember my thoughts on it. I've been using the Ilia, um, I forget the name, the Limitless Lash Mascara, and have just really fallen in love with that. So it's been a while since I used this, and I just can't remember how I felt about it. So let's go ahead and put it on together. So it has this like football-shaped wand. The bristles are plastic, and they're fairly short, so I'm guessing that this is going to be more of a volumizing versus lengthening kind of mascara. Oh yeah, okay. I do remember that this formula is just a teensy bit on the wetter side from what I generally like, um, but it's not too bad. Um, it doesn't feel like I'm getting it everywhere, which is generally my problem with uh, the wetter kind of mascara formulas. I just feel like it's like gonna end up all over my face. And this one definitely does not hold a curl at all. You can see that my lashes pretty much fallen already, but it does a really decent job like volumizing. I do feel like I look like I have more lashes than I do in actuality. 
Um, and I do remember thinking this wore well. I don't remember it flaking or smudging or anything. So I skipped the eyeliner step. Sometimes I feel like uh, when I don't use eyeliner, my eyes look a little bit more open. So we're trying that out. Uh, so I'm gonna skip the eyeliner step and go straight to lips. So I thought we could use one of these new NARS um, lip glosses, these oil infused lip tints, I think is what they're called. So there's two colors that came out with this uh, bronzer collection. This one is Reef, don't mind the glue on the packaging. They use glue to keep it in the PR box, you know, which is lovely, but the glue just like won't come off. It's really stubborn. And then there's this shade, which is Laguna. Um, I think Reef is a better match for me today, but let's go ahead and lip swatch both. So I'm gonna start with Laguna. I don't think I've ever used any of these oil infused lip tints from NARS. I don't think so. There's no scent. Oh, that's nice. So there's no scent. Oh. They're pretty sheer, but yeah, once I spread it out, it really thins out. Oh, it's really comfortable. Definitely feels like it's oil infused. It's like I can't believe it's not fragranced or scented at all, but yeah, no scent whatsoever. So that is Laguna. Not sticky at all. Definitely has more of like an oiliness to it. Uh, let's go ahead and try Reef. So there is Reef. I don't think you can necessarily see a color even though they're so bold looking in the tube, but I will say that I feel like this definitely looks cool toned, the Reef, versus the Laguna that looked like it had like a warmish tinge to it. Really nice, I like this formula. It's oily, but it doesn't feel too oily, you know, like too loose. There's no taste to it or anything. All right. Oh, you know what? I wanted to try one of these Power Chrome Loose Eye Pigments. They came out with four colors. This one is um, Shook'em. So maybe what I'll do is just kind of tap this right onto the lid. If we wanna amp up our look a little bit. Uh, loose. <laughs> You can see there's the cover on there. You can see remnants of this loose eyeshadow in there. And I swatched all of these when I hauled them. So if you wanna check out my latest haul video, um, you can see swatches of all of them there. But I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up some with my finger. These are really high shine. And just kind of press it onto my lid. Ooh, I'm definitely getting some fallout. But look at that sparkle. Ooh, really pretty. There's like some fallout on my lashes and I feel like I can see the reflection of them. <laughs> so sparkly, I don't do a lot of like really sparkly eyeshadows, I do like a shimmer, but these are really, really sparkly. Ooh, I love it. Well, that is it for this trying new makeup video. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video.